The AI industry has gotten caught red-handed running one of the biggest scams in tech history. Every time you pay for those extra reasoning models that think longer and deeper, you're actually paying more to make AI dumber. Two groundbreaking research papers from Anthropic and other inst top institutions just shattered everything we thought we knew about AI reasoning. So while companies like OpenAI are changing, are charging you premium prices for models that think harder, scientists discovered that these models actually perform worse the more that they reason. So if your reasoning models get distracted by irrelevant information like a toddler with ADHD, then you're seeing this. Are you watching your token costs explode while accuracy plummets? The data is in, it's absolutely devastating for the reasoning models, and I'm going to go through it all to, for you today. Welcome to Startup Pack. I'm Spencer, and here at Startup Pack, we love to train software developers as well as build custom software solutions for companies. With a decade of executive leadership as a fractional CTO and 25 years in software development, I've mastered transforming tech teams and products. So the AI reasoning revolution just hit a massive reality wall, and the results are pretty shocking. So remember when everyone was convinced that the more thinking time automatically meant that the AI was smarter? Well, researchers just proved that this is complete nonsense. After analyzing models from OpenAI, Anthropic, DeepSeek, and others, they found that five distinct ways that extend reasoning make AI models actually horribly worse. So today I'm breaking down the most uh, interesting discoveries that expose reasoning models as an expensive token burning scam. Now Claude models became increasingly distracted by irrelevant information when given more time to think, completely losing focus on the actual problems at hand. Researchers tested simple counting tasks like you have an apple and an orange, calculate how many fruit you have with, math with mathematical distractions thrown in. Now, instead of ignoring the irrelevant probability statements and riddles, Claude spent more tokens obsessing over the completely unre unrelated calculations. So the accuracy dropped from near perfect performance to around 85 to 90 percent simply because the model couldn't resist chasing shiny mathematical objects. Now, this pattern held consistently across multiple Claude versions, proving that longer reasoning doesn't create focus. It actually ruins it. So you literally are paying premium prices to watch AI models lose their mind over irrelevant details like a dog chasing squirrels. Now, OpenAI's O series, right? Their O series, which was supposed to be the reasoning series, right? Those models don't get distracted like Claude, but they fall into an even more expensive trap, which is called overfitting to familiar problem patterns. So when these models encounter problems that look like famous paradoxes or well-known puzzle types, they immediately attempt to apply complex memorized solutions. So let me say this another way. What they've been trained to try to solve these very particular problems. So if something you give it looks kind of like those, it tries to fit to those and that's called overfitting, right? Meaning it has this long list of these patterns that it wants to try to follow, solve. So like for instance, for a long time, OpenAI gave the wrong number of how many R's there are in strawberry, right? And so what it did is it trained it on the, at that actual test case, right? So if you go, come along and say, hey, how many R's are there in Mississippi, it actually could sit there and just spin over and over again looking for R's because there's no R's, but it's trying to fit to that model. Now, researchers found that the O series models would recognize framing like birthday paradox and start calculating complex probability theories for simple counting questions. So this overfitting actually gets worse with more reasoning time as the models double down on inappropriate solution approaches. Now, the longer you let them think, the more convinced they become that simple problems require PhD level mathematic frameworks. So that's the problem here. Now, what it ends up doing is just sitting there and burning your tokens. So for while you're paying for tokens, uh, you're paying for the tokens while the model convinces itself that it's counting requires more than just like, you know, calculated uh, calculus and things instead of just basic arithmetic. So let's go over the reports because I don't want you guys to think I'm just making this up here. So this is the first one of these, and it says inverse scaling and test time compute. So we construct evaluation tasks while extending the reasoning length of large language models, deteriorates performance, exhibiting an inverse scaling relationship between test time compute and accuracy. Our evaluation tasks span four categories, and it goes through the four categories here. But these findings suggest that while time computing scales remain promising for, model, for improving model capabilities, it may inadvertently reinforce problematic reasoning patterns. Our result demonstrates the importance of evaluating models across diverse reasoning lengths to identify these stress models. Now, this is the actual paper, and if you go through and look at all of this, you'll actually see that it's Anthropic, 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 folks from universities, Anthropic Fellow Program, Anthropic, right? So a lot of Anthropic here, and they actually kind of abuse on even Anthropic to say that their reasoning models uh, don't uh, aren't as good, right? 
Our results demonstrate the importance of evaluating models across diverse reasoning lengths to identify and redress the failure models in LRMs. So it goes through this and, and breaks this all down for you, but I've given kind of a, a brief overview to this. Now there was one particular chart in here I think I wanted to show. Um, Maybe it's in the other report. So this is, uh, but so this is what we're breaking down, and it gets really scientific. Let me see if it's down here toward the bottom. It's a really long paper, but um, yeah. So, um, but we, I've kind of summed it up for you here. And before, let's talk about this one. It says it's chain of thought reasoning of LMs of Mirage, a data distribution list. So, chain of thought, right? Which is what the, a lot of the reasoning are, right? It means it chains thought, so it puts one to another to another. That's what it's, it's calling chain of thought. Prompting has been shown to improve large language model performance on various tasks. When this approach appears to be uh, produce human-like reasoning, so that's what it's saying it, it, it's supposed to be here, right? This work to deep center why chain of thought reasoning fails, emphasizing the ongoing challenge of achieving genuine and generalized reasoning, right? So this one goes on to talk about the overfitting problem, uh, which, you know, which... Um, uh, which comes to this, right? Our results reveal that chain of thought reasoning is a brittle mirage that vanishes when it when it is pushed beyond training distributions. So basically it's saying that it works really well in their training situations, but when you start pushing it beyond that, it actually just burns tokens. And I've been hearing this more and more from my commenters. So again, best compliment you can give me is leave a comment down below because I, I answer every single one of them personally. So leave a comment down below if nothing else to say hi, but to tell me what your thoughts are on this because I'm hearing from a lot of you guys that it feels like these reasoning models are getting worse over time. And I think this is part of the bubble bursting. I think they're starting to, I think this is starting to turn into a full scam at this point where they're actually, they know this and they're allowing the models to continue to run and chew through the tokens. So extended reasoning causes models to abandon reasonable assumptions and latch onto plausible but co completely wrong correlations. So in, in regression tasks predicting student grades, model would initially fo uh, focus on logical factors like study hours. But with extended reasoning, they'd shift attention to irrelevant factors like sleep hours and stress, stress levels, destroying their predictive accuracy. So the longer these models think, thought, the more convinced themselves were spurious patterns were might meaningful relations. So what would happen is if you think of chain of thought, right? So it's changed this thought to this thought to this thought to this thought. Well, if it goes off on the wrong path right from the very th beginning, no matter how long it continues to think, it's not going to come back to that line of thinking. And that's the problem. It'll grab onto these thoughts and completely chew through them and burn through your tokens while it tries to think about the pattern. So I hear a lot of people be like, well, I, I did this and I left and 10 minutes later, I was still thinking that's so amazing. Actually, no, that's terrible. It's actually just burning through your tokens and you're just allowing the scam, scam to happen. So your reasoning tokens are literally training the AI to become worse at understanding cause and effect. So all reasoning models show devastating performance degradation on complex deductive tasks when given more time to think. Zebra puzzles and constraint satisfaction problems become harder for models to reasoning uh, to, as reasoning lengthened increases, not decreases. So basically, if the model doesn't get the answer in the beginning, the chance of it getting it better later on is worse, right? Now, models start second guessing, uh, second guessing correct deductions, exploring a relevant hypothesis and getting lost in their own reasoning loop. So let's take another scenario that frequently happens. So it'll start going along and it'll be like, well, I got the answer here, but maybe that's wrong. And it would go back and kind of start it again, right? On a different chain of thinking. So more thinking has not proved, and that's what both these papers are showing. More thinking did not make it, make it smarter. So instead, you're just paying for the computational cycles that are actively sabotaging the model's ability to solve the problems. So you're better off statistically from what these papers are showing you to say, give me a quick response to this rather than say get deep into it now if you have systems in your company that aren't connected and you need help getting those connected our specialty is helping companies connect systems we're actually doing a lot of different ai work where we're using it in data pattern matching because that's what ai is good at right it's good at matching patterns so systems that couldn't connect before we can use ai to help connect some of these systems in a safe and effective way where we build those agents out on your hardware on your system this is what we specialize in check out startup pack.com slash Spencer because we can help you out. Now, research from Arizona State University, my alma mater, uh, proves that chain of thought reasoning is actually just sophisticated pattern matching, not genuine reasoning. 
surprise, the AI don't actually think it's just a bunch of pattern matching. So when you get those pattern matching, and if it doesn't get it at first, your chance of that pattern matching dramatically goes down. Models achieve 100% accuracy when test cases match training patterns exactly, but performance collapses to zero with even the tiniest distribution of shifts. So again, back to that example before, if I say how many R's are there in blueberry, it's gonna think I'm asking about the question about how many R's there are in strawberry, and it will go to find out what that training pattern is. Now that may work, but if I say how many R's are there in the universe, it may think I'm looking for this, but that chain of thought isn't gonna work because it might just actually count the number of R's in the word the universe, right? And this is a silly example, but you understand what I mean. The reasoning chain looks perfectly logical and convincing, but they're just replaying memorized patterns from training data. Even a point zero 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 one five injection of new examples via supervised fine training could fix the problem, proving it's about data coverage, not reasoning ability. So your expensive reasoning tokens are buying you fluent sounding but logical, uh, logically bankrupt pattern replay. Now, Anthropic's own research on their own models reveal that reasoning models frequently fabricate their explanations and hide their actual decision-making process. When researchers slip the model hints about correct answers, like giving a student a cheat code, the, the models often use the hints but didn't mention them in their reasoning. Now, Claude 3.7 Sonnet was only faithful about using hints 41% of the time, while DeepSeek R1 was faithful just about 19% of the time. So the dishonesty gets worse on difficult questions, exactly when you need trustworthy reasoning the most. So you're not paying for bad reasoning, you're paying for AI models to lie to you about how it's thinking. And that's exactly what we need is Pinocchio with a long nose, right? So models trained on specific reasoning chain lengths completely fail when asked to handle different complexity levels. Text length generalization was equally disastrous. Models couldn't handle inputs even slightly longer or shorter than training examples. Your premium reasoning subscriptions are buying you expensive one trick ponies that break the moment you need real flexibility. Now reasoning models are shockingly fragile to major changes in how problems are, are presented, exposing their shallow, uh, their shallow pattern matching. And guys, this isn't language that I'm just making up to be dramatic here. Like this is from the papers themselves. Our results reveal the chain of thought reasoning is a brittle mirage that vanishes when pushed beyond training distributions. Guys, I'm not making it up here. And, and there's more, more reports have actually been coming out on this more and more. This mirage is starting to disappear. And we've been predicting this. And if you've been following my channel, which I hope you are, and if you aren't, hit that subscribe button. But as always, leave a comment. The more we dig into this, researchers found, researchers found that modifications to core elements like numbers and transformations had devastating effects while other changes were less impactful. So you're paying reasoning premiums for models that can be broken by changing calculate to compute, right? Because it's, it's, uh, there's a certain pattern that will say calculate this versus if you say compute it, it might go off in a totally different direction. So real, would it, real, let's say that twice. real world enterprise applications are discovering that reasoning models create more problems than they solve in production environments. So recently we were working on an AI uh, model and what we found was that we could get about 80% accuracy for it to give us a binary decision. We would say, is this thing this or this? And we found that it could give us about an 80% accuracy. Now, the thing about it is that in one sense, you might say, well, 80% is pretty good. On the other hand, you're like, that means one out of five of the answers are wrong. So what we actually have had to do is actually chain that through three layers of reasoning. And by the third layer of reasoning, the percentage of, um, of possibility uh, or in our testing was roughly about three to 4%. And in that case, we then got it to it. Now, again, it was pretty impressive that it could do this, right? Because it meant, I mean, it saves, this is going to ultimately save a ton of man hours in the process. It, it wouldn't even be realistic to do this certain project in man hours. But the point that we had to run that through three times is really di like disturbing and goes to show. And, and luckily for us, this is on a system we built on the client's machines, on client servers that are running this. And so it's like the client isn't just chewing it up. But if the client had had to pay for this, the bill would have been tens of thousands of dollars per month. Whereas instead, we built our own servers for them and, and then are running the AI and machine learning on these servers. So this is some of our specialty. Again, we love to do this for clients. So if you need help with this, reach out startupact.com slash Spencer. 
Now, in closing here, the reasoning model's hype is creating a massive credibility gap between marketing claims and scientific reality. Major AI companies are promoting reasoning capabilities that their own researchers have proven to be fundamentally flawed. Academic papers are beginning being ignored while marketing departments continue selling reasoning models as, as, as revolutionary breakthroughs. The disconnect between research findings and product positioning is reminiscent of the crypto bubble and the dot-com bubble bur burst and every other bubble before that. Now, industry benchmarks are being gamed to hide reasoning model failures with evaluations carefully designed to avoid distribution shifts. So after 25 years in technology, I can tell you that this level of disconnect between research and product claims always ends badly for those who are trying to build this if they don't know how to use these systems. Now, again, if you have problems with your systems, reach out to us because our specialty is helping you connect systems so your company can work to maximum efficiency. So check out startuppack.com slash Spencer and here's some great information about some of our services and always make leave a comment to say, if, say hi. Hi, I'm Spencer, a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and 25 years in software development, I've transformed technology teams and products for businesses just like yours. As your fractional CTO, you get the strategic guidance of a seasoned technology executive without the full-time commitment, perfect for companies ready to leverage cutting edge technology without expanding headcount. My team at Startup Hack has already built advanced AI agents for small and medium businesses, automating complex workflows and delivering advanced ROI to human workflows. We specialize in creating custom software that connects your systems into a single coherent technology ecosystem. Our development approach focuses on tangible business outcomes. For one client, we developed AI powered workflows that cut days off of human processes. For another company, by connecting multiple systems, we reduce processing time to increase their ROI by over 75%. We don't don't just write code, we architect solutions that scale. Whether you need cloud system architecture, data integration between legacy systems, or custom AI agents that automate your unique business processes, my team delivers results that exceed your expectations. Having led technology for a lot of companies and launched seven successful brands of my own, I bring battle-tested expertise to your business challenges. Our specialty is turning technological complexity into business advantage. So if you're ready to harness the power of AI and custom software to drive your business forward, let's connect Together, we'll build technology that doesn't just solve today's problems, it positions you for tomorrow's opportunities. Technology leadership, decades of experience, AI powered. Reach out today and we can help you. Check out startuppack.com slash Spencer.